Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm just a Going a day's walk. And he cried out, 
Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 62, verses 6 through 14. Let us read this in unison. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly, Truly my, my hope, hope is in him. him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth and grace set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that the power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. For you repay everyone according to his deeds. The second reading today is a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little further and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. He immediately called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated. Jesus says to Peter and Andrew and James and John, follow me and I will make you fishermen of men. Sometimes we get wrapped up in what Jesus is talking about. I mean, is, is he fly fishing? Is he using a rod and reel? Does he use a worm or a, a plastic lure? Is he bragging them in in nets? What's it mean to fish for people? And I think that when we do that, we may be straining on the nets and swallowing the camels because I think to a certain extent, we're losing the idea of what Jesus is trying to communicate in this story. And yes, Jesus is calling apostles to him. He's calling, he's calling people to follow him. But I think Jesus has something larger in mind. Once upon a time, there were two old gentlemen who'd been lifelong friends. 
And one winter's night, they were sitting next to each other, gazing at a log fire going into the fireplace and discussing religion. And they were talking about the value of the church and the value of being in the community of the church. And his one friend said, well, you know, I could be part of the, I could be part of a follower of Jesus without going to church. I do not need to go to church. I have all I need in my own private devotions and my own private faith. And they argued that back and forth for a while. Till finally the other friend took a, a set of tongs by the fireplace, reached in and grabbed a large glowing coal and brought it out and set it on the hearth. And they sat there and they watched as that glowing coal faded and faded and faded and faded down to nothingness. And finally his friend said, I think I see what you're talking about. Because I think what Jesus is doing today is calling us into community. We are called to be part of a community. And what we've experienced th th this past year with the, with the pandemic has strained that community because quite often we're not allowed to be together. We're not allowed to come together to worship and to share each other's worship experience. And that has put a strain on that community. And we need to realize we're going to recapture that. But it's part of what we need to be. All of these new things like we're doing today, this service online, is not the norm. The norm is to have a hundred people here sitting shoulder to shoulder, hugging and kissing each other during the exchange of the peace, sharing the Eucharist together when they can and being part of this community where we draw our strength and our faith and our comfort and, and our interpersonal relationships. It's being part of a community. And we see this call to community going all the way back to the first of Genesis where God says, let us create humankind in our image. In our image, a community already exists what we later defined as the Trinity. And when God does create man, he looks at Adam and says, it is not good for him to be alone. We need other people. And so God creates Eve and we create a community. When God calls Abraham, he sends him forth to create a community and says that his descendants will be more than the grains of sand on the seashore. And when God calls Moses to lead his people into the, into the desert, he is building a community, a people of God, to follow him. And so we see this today as Jesus is building a ministry. He is building an image of the, what we now call the body of Christ, the church. What he's building is community. And we see this today where we say, where he says, reminds us that wherever two or three are gathered to my, in my name, I am in the midst of them. Anglican doctrine says if we do Eucharist, we have to have a congregation. I can't just stand here and do Eucharist just all by myself with nobody here. I need a community, at least two or three people to participate and, and, and to receive and to be part of that Eucharistic celebration. Community is the name of the game. Community is what we have, we, we have lost recently. But I think, I think we're on the verge, I hope we're on the verge, as, as vaccines become more prevalent and more people are being inoculated, as we are moving, moving through this to a, to a new dawn when we can come back together, let us make it part of our plan to renew the community that we belong to here at St. Stephen's. Let us, let us become what we are, the body of Christ. Let us get back to sharing one another's joys and hurts, to share each other's celebrations and sorrows, to share one another's aches and pains and, and dance, dance, at, dance at weddings and cry at funerals. Let us come together in this community that Jesus is calling us to, surrounded by him, 
We are part of that great followers of Christ, the church. We are that community that began with Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Nathaniel and all the others who came along. We are part of the large group. We need each other. We need the community. Apart from that, we will be like that glowing coal that simply fades and fades and fades until it becomes nothing but a cold hunk of ash. We need the fire of the community to keep us going. We need that fire of the community to keep us alive. This is a new year. We've just inaugurated a new president. We have, as I mentioned, vaccines on the horizon that are coming. We, we, are, we can see the, end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel of when the churches will reopen. And it's when we do, we need to come together and celebrate what we have been without for a year, to celebrate that community we have and to make it whole and strong and part of us again. Jesus is calling us to be fishers of people. That means simply dragging people into community, bringing people to a place where this is where they want to be. This is the place where I come and I am at home. One of the reasons we baptize children is that they, they grow up knowing that this is their home. This is their community. This is where they, they, they have a, a sense of being and, 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 and identity. This is our place. As I've said before, growing up in the Episcopal Church, even though I got into a lot of trouble sometimes, as an acolyte and doing other interesting things that I won't mention in this broadcast. But there was never a time, even when the cathedral dean would sometimes holler at me, there was never a time I did not feel that that was not my family, that I did not belong there or that I would never be welcome. That's what we call the body of Christ. That is what Jesus is building, starting off with just a few men and growing and growing and growing and growing until we become like that fire in the fireplace, lit up by the power of the Spirit, buoyed up by each other's love and presence, and becoming that, that community where we discover who we are as people. That is the vision of St. Stephen's for the future. We are to become fishers of people. We are asked to bring them into this community that place where they will know they are loved and accepted today and always. Amen. Let's join together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayer. 
prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our presiding bishop, Michael, and our diocesan bishop, Kathleen, our rector, Bishop Michael, for our newly inaugurated president, Biden, our vice president, Harris, and governor, for this gathering and for all ministers and people praying for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for, every, for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially Yesba, Jana, Gary, Ryan, Steve, Ivy, Kelly, Titus, Bishop Bill, Carol, Andy S., Fred, Mary Ann, Michelle, Mike K., Brad, Steve, Tate, Michelle, Cheryl, Linnell, Kathy, Stephanie, Julia. Ongoing prayers are for the Clark family, Anna and Belden, Levita, Larry, Paul, Lorraine, Bob, Dick, Erlene, Bobby, Bill, Donna, B, Joan J, Dan, Wanda, Jean, Joan, and Bill. For those in the armed forces known to us, Kevin, Will, Lane, Zach, Sam, Brandon, and Alexis. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Brazil. We pray for the people of Algeria, Libya, Morocco, and Tunisia. We pray for St. Mark's of Blue Rapids. Pray that we may have the grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As we bring our service to the close, let us join together in the prayer our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.